Welcome to The Bo Show. As most of you know by now, comedian Norm MacDonald passed away last week at the age of 61 after a private nine-year battle with cancer. And he's been eulogized by many comedians over the past week. And I wanted to devote today's show to him, not just to remember a comedic legend, but also to speak to what comedy is today and what Norm represented and what has become a rather unfunny world. McDonald was a cast member of Saturday Night Live from 1993 to 1998 and one of its most beloved cast members. He was known for his anchoring of Weekend Update and his unique delivery style. He refused to go easy on O.J. Simpson in spite of pressure by NBC exec Don Olmeyer. I find this to be unique because it shows how the network began putting a clamp down on true unfettered comedy, even back in the 90s. Norm was born in Quebec City and began his deadpan style of comedy in the clubs of Canada. He was a writer for The Dennis Miller Show, someone who would also join the ranks of SNL. Norm also wrote for Roseanne uh, before landing his SNL gig. Some of Norm's more iconic bits on SNL were his gum-chewing portrayal of Burt Reynolds on Celebrity Jeopardy, as well as his great impressions of Bob Dole, Andy Rooney, Clint Eastwood, David Letterman, and many others. But perhaps his Weekend Update spotlight was where he was his best. His style of delivery gave a, a rawness to his jokes, sometimes an, an almost uncomfortable reaction, which is great because he was totally politically incorrect. His producing partner, Lori Jo Hextra, said that Norm once wrote that a joke should catch someone by surprise, that it should never pander. Many of Norm's jokes did catch people by surprise. And if you compare that to the total pandering of Colin Jost and Michael Che today, the differences are stark. McDonald's dismissal from SNL was a bit of a controversy because it was thought to be linked to Norm's relentless barbs at O.J. Simpson. On Weekend Update, after O.J.'s not guilty verdict was read, Norm said, quote, well, it is finally official. Murder is legal in the state of California, unquote. <laughs> Norm perhaps brought his own strong convictions into his comedy, but I think that's the point and what makes a great comic. They have to observe things as they see them, not how you want to see them. They may rip the band-aids off of the reality of life, but that's okay because there's humor in that. Norm was experimental, a non sequitur kind of comic, and he didn't go for what was convenient or what might be most loved. He went with instinct. Saturday Night Live used to be that way. They'd allow comic geniuses to just be that. And then tides turned, and as networks became more and more liberal, or perhaps just more and more obviously liberal, the jokes changed and the comedy suffered. In the Trump years, the show became woke and morally righteous, especially the day after the 2016 election, with the cast opening with a maudlin, pandering version of Leonard Cohen's song, Hallelujah. As if <laughs> the whole SNL cast and network had collectively decided that America was over. But Norm MacDonald was a rebel. His appearance on The View was perhaps one of his most controversial. Watch his relentless ragging of Bill Clinton, which got all the liberal ladies in a tizzy. Okay, Norm, you're Canadian. Yes, I am. So what do you think of this whole presidential mess? Uh, well, I, I hope that uh, uh, the Democrats don't steal the election from the, uh, the winner, you know, but mm -hmm. who knows? Well, <laughs> you like George Bush, don't you? I love George Bush, man. He's a good man, decent. You know, uh, none of this. Hey, uh, uh, he's, uh, you know, he's not a, a liar, or crook, murderer, or anything like that. So it'd be good to get the. See, I, I don't. I think we should get the homicide out of the White House and get like a a, a fresh start because we don't want any more murderers. I think no, we, we should just go on to the next question. Oh. Who are the murderers? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Clinton. He murdered a guy. Yeah, you know we're not. <laughs> You're not no, allowed to put out no, no, no accusations without that. That's a little Charlie. too far. That's the way it does let's, just, let's just go on to the next question. <laughs> <part. laughs> yeah. This is not my week. What can I tell you? <laughs> oh, it's not mine either. And I'm being very nice, okay? <laughs> 
Uh-huh, be a good boy. Now, Norm. Do you never hear that? No. Listen, Norm, we don't need to talk about I don't want to get into this, and I don't want to hear it, and this is not the place to make those accusations. And you're supposed to be funny. Oh. Let's get on there. Exactly. <laughs> so get with it. There you go. <laughs> this is a live show. Not Why? Norm, but you have been properly chastised by Barbara. Oh. So I'm now going to ask the next question. I thought it was a matter of record. Shut no. up. Uh, Norm, <laughs> shut up. You can see that Norm was just as convinced that Bill Clinton was a murderer as he was about O.J. Simpson. But that's the thing. While murder isn't funny, he's providing commentary on how to be politically incorrect. He's bucking the system and being irreverent. And the view, which we might as well call the Democrat view, couldn't handle his comedic irreverence. Imagine someone now going on The View and calling Donald Trump a liar, a cheat, a thief, a bully, any number of names. They would eat that up all day long. They would welcome that and never once try to cut that person off. McDonald's longtime friend and fellow Canadian comedian Bob Saget eulogized him in a 37 minute conversational YouTube video, understandably devastated by the loss of his friend. He talked about Norm's class and how he couldn't roast Saget because he felt he was too much of a friend. It's tragic that you know, we have to go back and try to find YouTube videos of, of old George Carlin or Norm MacDonald to find out what real unabashed comedy used to be before wokeism tore a hole in our culture. Bill Maher is someone who has been complaining about this for a while now. College campuses cancel comedians for invading their safe spaces and cancel culture tears down the careers of comedians merely for saying what is uncomfortably true. I watched several uh, interviews that McDonald had done on Howard Stern and even one with his own sister, his sister-in-law on a Canadian program on CTV. It was interesting because he talked about Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and how unfunny he was. Sadly, blackface Trudeau just got reelected in Canada. But Norm made a very reticent point about comedy in the Trump era, which I found enlightening. Take a look. Comedy in the time of Trump, is it more difficult than it was when you were on Saturday Night Live? It's more difficult in, in the time of Trump for good comedians, and it's way easier for bad comedians, you know. You don't have a world view by just saying you don't like Trump. You know what I mean? That doesn't count. Like, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't just say, I hate Trump, and, and that makes you a good person. And uh, the Democrats just can't say, I hate Trump, and that means they have a position. You know, that's no position. Uh, so so for, uh, for idiots, it's an easier time because uh, you go, well, that guy's, uh, that guy's the idiot, not me. But uh, if you try to do smart comedy, it's better to stay away from uh, uh, stay away from Trump. You know. Norm hits the nail on the head about a worldview being based entirely upon hatred of one person. Norm talked about how he felt that Daryl Hammond's impression of Trump was far better than Alec Baldwin's, because Alec Baldwin came from a position of bias and hatred for Trump that eked through. He considered that the low-hanging fruit and not smart comedy. I think this is especially true for Stephen Colbert, Seth Meyers, and the Late Night Guys. They come from a worldview of hatred for him and looked for the lowest hanging fruit they could find. The problem for them is that Trump himself was funnier than any impression of him was. So Late Night had to just keep inserting laugh tracks because it became so hackneyed. America became a country of weaklings who can't bear to be offended, and it hurt comedy pretty badly. You can't laugh at anything anymore, or if you do, you better do it in private. I think that's honestly in some ways why Donald Trump became president, because he was so funny and entertaining and not politically correct that for many, it was this collective belly laugh because he could get away with saying the things we all wanted to say like this. You know, it is, uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. <laughs> I 
I'm sorry, but that's comedic gold. Now here's Norm Macdonald doing stand-up in the first part of the pandemic, before the lockdowns, which is almost like <laughs> looking at a time capsule. He's talking about the coronavirus. Take a look. Oh, I feel something. <laughs> it's only the virus twisting around my brain stem. I think it's the, feel my brain stem a little liquefying. Oh well. <laughs> Nobody said it'd be a rose garden, you know. But they actually did this live on, when we were listening to the radio, they were talking about the South by Southwest, and they said, well, there's been a cancellation at South by Southwest, this band, oh, the whole thing's canceled. That's what the guy says. And the guy hands him another thing. Ah. South by Southwest has been canceled, the entire thing. And the direction south. That's gone. Who knows, you know? I mean, who knows how you're gonna die? I mean, we all know now. But think back a week ago. Think back a week ago. I loved back a week ago. <laughs> Moving way too fast. See, even though Norm was well into late stages of his cancer, he had the courage to go up there and entertain people and make them laugh about, well, a very uncomfortable thing and they are legitimately laughing. No one knew that Norm would die just a year later, and not even of COVID. But he is an observationist. And while those observations can be real, they're also funny. Perhaps just as ironic, but not funny, is how YouTube slapped a COVID-19 footer at the bottom of this YouTube video with a link to the CDC. This label slapped on there while Norm roasts Big Pharma in his stand-up routine. It's like Google and YouTube have no sense of humor at all. They can't leave well enough alone. I also heard an interview with Norm where he talks about having to walk on eggshells. Because in comedy, nowadays, you can't experiment anymore. Comedy is testing the ground and where you might hurt someone else's feelings. Most people come to comedy shows for a sense of escape. And you have that tiny, tiny minority of people that get their underpants in a wad and they ruin it for everyone else. It's those same loud misfits that ruin comedy and entertainment for everyone. Because guess what? Then comedians have to write their material based on that slim 1% rather than the 99% of all of us who want to just come and have a good time and laugh. Kids growing up today don't have a clue what real comedy is. They just hear the F word about 500 times and think that will pass as comedy. People under the age of about 25 are on TikTok, a Chinese platform, doing the dumbest things you have ever seen in your life. And that passes as comedy. It could be the latest challenge from eating a Tide Pod to planking. But no matter what they are, they're not funny. And they have zero originality. If you watch my show and seen my past episodes, you'll know that I try to inject some humor here and there, especially with some skits, satire, and musical parody. I do this because in these skits, there is truth, whether it's about Biden or AOC or about masks. The reason why comedy exists is that it alerts us to collective observational truth, but that is precisely narrated or explained by one person. I've been to comedy shows before, and I'm, I'm actually thinking of one in particular where I did not laugh one time because it was tawdry, predictable sexual humor and swearing. It was the lowest grade, lowest hanging, unoriginal fruit the dude could find. I was even tempted to laugh. And when you're in a comedy club, you almost feel compelled or biased to laugh. With this one guy, there wasn't anything remotely funny about his act. Norm Macdonald and other legendary greats saw the world in a particular way. And whether it was through an impression or a deadpan stunner, it looked like he enjoyed what he was doing. Perhaps that makes his passing last week all the more hurtful to us all. Because we are watching true comedians die without any real great successors. What comedians have to fear now is anything they have ever said or done decades ago so that someone on the internet can go dig it up, get offended, and then present it to whoever might be hiring that comedian so that they can cancel them. Honestly, that is what it has come to. Comedy at its very core is meant to elicit a response in us. 
It's all about getting that laugh. In many ways, that response comes from truth. Comedy can also be very irreverent. I think about Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes. The fear on all of those Hollywood elites' faces when Ricky started in about Jeffrey Epstein being their friend. And Bill Burr hit a nerve when he presented at the Grammys and poked fun of woke culture. That's why comedians are having to take aim at woke cancel culture because it's killing their profession. You can't say certain words. You can't make fun of certain disadvantaged groups. And God help you if you talk about race. You can't dial into the humanity of comedy if you can't talk about humanity. As I think about a guy like Larry David who created Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm, the funny thing is that both shows are really shows about nothing. That's what they say. And the irony of it all is that it's not really a show about nothing. It's about life and observation and the idiosyncrasies of life. People who talk too close. A woman who has man hands. George's neurotic mother and father. We see bits and pieces of our own family in this. That kernel of truth, even if it's exaggerated, is what strikes the chord in us. So the comedian takes those observations and weaves them into this musical symphony and leads us to a conclusive punchline. The sitcom, like Seinfeld, is short for situational comedy. We laugh because of the situations that these people find themselves in, whether that's Jerry's pirate shirt or Elaine's terrible dance. <laughs> these are situationally funny, but as a society, we have killed all the humor. We have put bubble wrap on everybody so that we can only have a diluted, safe form of comedy that won't offend anyone. Norm MacDonald got canned from SNL because he was relentless about his comedic convictions about O.J. Simpson. The NBC executive couldn't stand it, so he didn't just kill the bit and the comedy, he killed the comedian who told it. And we have lots of those types of executives doing this very same thing today. This really becomes a freedom of speech issue. Norm MacDonald was a lot more philosophical than I had previously thought, especially after I listened to a couple more interviews with him. Norm was clearly a deep thinker, and he wanted to deeply analyze why he believed what he believed. I didn't know this about Norm MacDonald, but it certainly made me realize what a deep thinker that he actually was, especially on matters of, of faith and spirituality, and as he worked within a rather agnostic or soulless industry. He recounts how people like Sarah Silverman would kind of ridicule him for believing in some invisible dude up in the sky, because that's how atheists frame the argument, that which can only be observed. So Norm actually applied logic and called his faith a choice, which I think is rather astute, because an atheist has to choose the same type of faith as well. It's just a faith in the inexplicable and a faith in science that seems to be always changing or refuted. Look at all of the so-called science around COVID that everyone seems to die on the hill for. It's changed multiple times over this pandemic. So I respect the process and introspection Norm went to, and I imagine that got even deeper during his 10-year battle with cancer. He even told Larry King that he seemed to have a God-shaped hole in his heart. Take a look. Never got the answer to the one question, which is why. Why Connecticut children? Why? Why a bomber in Boston? Because if, God, if there is a God, yeah. he's omnipotent. Yes. If he's omnipotent, he could prevent it. Yes. Why didn't he prevent it? I don't know, man, but you got to stop hanging out in that hot tub with Bill Maher all the time. And get some, it sounds like you got a God-shaped hole in your heart. That's so interesting to me because I know of a songwriter in Nashville named Chuck Cannon who wrote a song by that very name. I think it's wonderful that in being a comedian and someone who loved to laugh and found things funny, that he was also able to fill his own God-shaped hole. And Hollywood is filled with people who have God-shaped holes who just choose to believe in themselves or nothing at all. But the one thing they have a hard time believing in is God. He questions the great physicist Stephen Hawking, who calls the concept of heaven a fairy tale. Norm thought that it was a very unscientific way of approaching it. And he wishes that science would devote itself to pursuing intelligent design the way it pursues the discovery of new stars and galaxies. It's as though scientists are not really interested in figuring out how we got here or what life actually means. 
why it has a trajectory. Ben Stein had this exact same question for scientists like Dawkins in his movie Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed. I didn't know how deeply philosophical and even spiritual Norm Macdonald was, but I'll wager that more people will come to know about this after his death. They appreciated his comedy, but maybe they didn't know the man and the thinker behind it. Norm struggled with some of our most basic questions about God and life, but he also decided to logically think them through and come to some personal choices. Norm has said that, quote, comedy is surprises. So if you're intending to make somebody laugh and they don't laugh, that's funny, unquote. He saw the irony in things and in life, but you could tell he also wanted people to put down their phones and to live a little too. Take a listen. If only we could stop with, you know, stop like with these little tiny things and this preposterous gadgetry that we're talking into and, and just for a moment like uh, think about uh, real stuff. I think I'm just as impressed with Norm's comedy as I am his pursuit of faith in the spiritual world. It was clear that he believed life had meaning, and that's something many, many people struggle with. So we all sit here and we mourn Norm MacDonald for dying of cancer at age 61, which is rather young. And I'll bet many out there, especially atheists, would think, well, where is God in that? If he's such a believer, why didn't God spare him? But Norm had the view that bad was created so that good could come from it. It always winds up in good. But it's so much more philosophical than that. And perhaps, just as importantly, Norm always had that, that grin on his face, like he knew something that you didn't. Or maybe he was choosing to see the humor and irony in a situation that you weren't in on. And that's the great thing about comedians. They can find the humor in things or in people that we can't because we're just too stuck in our heads. That's why we need comedians like Norm MacDonald to translate that to us. In these days, we truly need a trailblazer like Norm because we have comedy and humor police. We are told what should be funny and what is off limits. And if we can't observe each other and laugh, then we aren't living. This past year or so, we have been told what to do a lot. And I think by not being able to go to see concerts or to comedy shows, we lost a step. Comedian Bill Burr called CNN treasonous, un-American pieces of crap for not being able to criticize Biden. He's right, but he's one of the few that makes brash, unfiltered statements like that, which are comedy gold. I hope we can all remember Norm MacDonald and his comedic genius, but also his passion for life and the pursuit of the thereafter and why we all should be introspective about the meaning of life. I'll end today's show with a classic clip of Norm on Conan O'Brien's show. This is a great clip in which he was just on a total roll and had everyone in stitches. But uh, what's the movie going to be called? <laughs> well, really? I know what it's going to be called. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> if it's got Carrot Top in it, you know what a good name for it would be? What's that, Norm? Box Office Poison. <laughs> Smith, the girl sitting to your left, is in the movie. I'm gonna go see it for fun. <laughs> you scare everybody else away. No, I love this girl. I would see any movie with this girl in it. She's a beautiful lady and, and a talented, nice talk show guest. Okay. As evidenced by her appearance on our rival show. <laughs> All right, well, there's this two hour season finale of Melrose Place. There's this movie coming out. Yes. Title undetermined at this point. Chairman of the board. Oh, all right. Do something with that, you freak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet the board is spelled B-O-R-E-D. 